<laughs> oh, buddy. These walls need to be primed. They need to be primed bad. Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here with a guide to using Bin Shellac Primer. I'm going to cover what it is, what it's best used for, why to use it over other primers in certain instances, and how to apply it safely. Ish. Uh, recently I got a house and the last project on my to-do list is addressing the garage. I've got bigger plans in there, but for now I just need to do a once-over, get things moving, get some more of my crap moved in there. So, uh, the walls in there are original, or as some may say, vintage, and they're gross. So, um, I repaired them, but then to prime it I chose to go with Bin. This is a shellac-based primer and shellac is actually a resin secreted by the lac bug, commonly the Kara lacca variety. I'm not making that up. It's a type of beetle that lives in Thailand and India. It eats bark and sap and then poops out this resin that's then scraped off, made into flakes, and then to make a product like this, you mix those flakes with alcohol and pigment, bada bing bada boom, you've got Bin Primer. This product has been around a super long time in shellacs of all varieties, and they are super aggressive to work with. The fumes are quite potent. I mean, it's, it's bad. So why would you use this over other primers? So the key difference with shellac is that when you lay down this product, it creates an impermeable barrier between the surface you laid it over and the next thing you're gonna put on top of it, usually a finish paint. Um, the, the bond that it makes with itself is super tight, so uh, odor and stains don't penetrate through. Penetrates us. Mm. So you can go over almost anything, and I have yet to find a product that's more effective at doing what this can do. And I've tried almost all of the primers, both oil-based and latex-based, from Sherwin Williams, Benjamin Moore, uh, Home Depot, the other Zinsner products like Coverstain, um, and nothing kind of beats this. Uh, if you know of something, hit me up in the comments. I'm interested. Also, it dries super quick. A lot of the oil-based primers take a while to dry and flash off. As soon as you it dries, with which is like within 20 minutes, the odor dissipates really quickly, and it has an eggshell finish. So it dries really hard and really smooth. Uh, so when you uh, go over it with your top coats, you get a lot of good spread, whereas when you have flat primers, a lot of times it looks splotchy on your first coat. This looks pretty even, Steven, uh, right out the jump on coat numero uno. So when is it a good time to use this product? Some of the best applications. Uh, one is any type of stain. So uh, markers, pens, scuffs, uh, water damage, smoke, uh, those knots in wood, like if you have tannin bleed through, this is what we use. Converting oil trim to painted, like latex-based trim or even a hybrid. Uh, if we can't get the hybrids to grip up, like advanced and emerald urethane, uh, then we'll bend the uh, trim. Kind of staying in line with trim conversion is converting stained and polyurethane trim to uh, painted and if you're doing like handrails or uh, spindles balusters my buddy's doing this right now at his house and uh, If you're going over a stained surface if you hit this with Ben You're just gonna have a much better time with whatever your your uh, finished product is gripping up and lasting longer Another big thing is kitchen cabinets a lot of my buddies that spray kitchen cabinets will do a coat of Ben Even if you're not gonna spray it and you just want to um, hand brush it. This is a great product to use as well uh, fills in some of that grain and gives your uh, top coat something really nice to bond to. Uh, also, furniture. If you are painting a piece of furniture that may have gotten sprayed in a factory uh, and you're, you know, want to make sure that it's going to, whatever you're going to put on is going to stick, bin is a really nice way to go. Painting over wallpaper. We had this happen not too long ago where the client just didn't even want to mess with trying to strip it because they said it was a nightmare. So we're just like, all right. And uh, if you lay down bin because it seals in uh, moisture and everything, the top coat of latex, which is a water-based product, isn't gonna penetrate that and reactivate the wallpaper where you're gonna have less of a chance of the wallpaper peeling off once you uh, put on your top coats of paint. Another fun thing, it's this product used quite a bit in remediation companies for sealing in odors. So if you have an apartment or a house that had a uh, heavy smoker in it, uh, or even like a fireplace and the whole place smells like smoke and gross garage walls, which is what I used it for. Before we get into application, I just want to mention cost here real quick. This product is going for right around 75 bucks a gallon. Um, you can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, 
and most Benjamin Moore retailers, pretty much any place but Sherwin Williams. And I prefer just the regular Ben Shellac, not the synthetic, uh, which is, uh, I think they call it like Ben Advanced. Just stick with this stuff because there was a problem with the Lac Beetle a couple years ago and they were running out. So, but then the, the Lac Beetle is back in business and doing quite well. So, plenty of Shellac resin to go around for everybody. So, just get the OG. You want the, you want Primo Beetle Poop in your shellac, in my opinion. Onward to how to safely apply this product. Uh, one of the things you really wanna be mindful of is the fumes. When you're using this product, as soon as you open the can, you are gonna get just punched in the face with fumes. They're quite aggressive, and you wanna make sure you're doing everything you can to mitigate that impact on your, uh, on your nice, nice face. So uh, you wanna use a good respirator. I like this one and I'm gonna attach the filters for it right now. And you really, the kind of filters actually do matter. Um, these are the organic vapor cartridge P100s as we refer to them. They come in a box, it looks like meow. I'm gonna pop these filters on just so you guys can see what it looks like. Boom. All right, so uh, that's the that's the respirator with the pink P100s uh, on it. Um, you really want to make sure you get a good seal on your face. Uh, if you have a manly man beard like I do, uh, it can be a little bit hard to get a good seal. Um, a good way to tell if you have a good seal is whether or not you can smell or taste the product. Um, and you'll know if it's coming through. And also, if you once you do have a good seal, and if you do start smelling it, either like adjust your mask or you might need to replace your filters. Um, the other big thing, along with a good respirator, is airflow. Uh, when I did the garage, I opened up the back door and the front of the like the main garage door, and I had a fan my big air mover blowing air through. The other thing to consider to use is gloves. The reason I use them is if I'm cutting in a ceiling with the uh, shellac, it's a very runny product, so it's gonna drip and it's gonna just come right down your brush, like generally onto your hands. And shellac's somewhat difficult to get off, so having gloves on works really well. Uh, just protects your hands. And if you are rolling overhead, definitely wear a hat because that'll just keep some of the flecking uh, from coming into your eyeballs. Now for the application portion of the evening. Uh, <laughs> when you open the can, uh, you're gonna need to stir it. And this is a product you want to stir, not shake. A lot of times there's going to be um, more of a thick layer at the bottom of the can. You wanna kinda of stir and incorporate all of that throughout uh, the product. In the garage that I was doing, I concrete, I used a concrete stain after I finished all of the painting, so I wasn't worried about getting splatter on the floor, so I didn't tarp off anything. If you're not doing that and you have things you don't wanna get shellac on, you really need to tarp off because it's gonna splatter. So. Uh, and then for brushing, so any crappy old brush will, will serve. A lot of times too, I will grab any brush that my sales rep tries to give me to convert me to purdy brushes, and I just use these, because I don't care. A little side note on rolling here real quick. In the video, I was using a 14-inch Pro Doozy FTP. It's a half-inch nap roller. That's just what we use for pretty much everything. The product is quite watery, so when you actually go to put it on, uh, you want to. You don't need to press that hard into the roller uh, as you're putting it on the surface. If you press really hard, it'll just all kind of squeeze, like it'll wring out like a sponge and just fall on whatever's below that. So really light pressure on this, and once it soaks in, you can get really good spread. For cleaning up shellac, you can use denatured alcohol or ammonia. Uh, fun fact, don't mix ammonia and bleach because that'll kill you. For cleanup and stuff in general, I just throw away everything that I've used. I trash the brush, I trash the roller cover, and then usually I'm using inserts for both the edging container and the rolling pan. So I just trash out all of that and I get that in a big black trash bag and far away from me outside of the house as soon as possible. So if you've got something to prime, and it's stained or gross or whatever, and you need to make sure that your top coats are gonna stick, nothing's gonna bleed through, check out Ben Shellac Primer from Zinsner. It's made from bug poop, and it's oh so bad, but it's so good. Till next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Peace. Amazing.